hello and welcome back for another Hatha class. I've got about an hour class for you today. Hopefully something that's pretty easy to do at home, especially because you don't need any straps today. So all I would recommend really is two blocks and your blanket or your towel. If you don't have a blanket, that works just as well. So we're going to start laying down on our backs once again. So you can go ahead and move off your blanket if you have it and just set it to the side so it's there when you need it later on. Go ahead and lay down on your back. And as you lay down on your back, explore the way you might feel most comfortable today relaxing. You can keep your knees bent and your hands on your belly if you feel like it. Or you can play with stretching your legs long and letting your arms float loose on either side of you. And every day is different, so feel free to take all the time you need to try a couple of options. If your knees are bent, you can always let the knees touch and the feet step a bit wider. Sometimes that makes your low back and your hips more comfortable. Or you can roll up a blanket and tuck it under the back of your knees if you just want a, a littler bend. So as you settle in wherever your body is comfortable today, letting your sensations lead you into some place that is supportive and safe and stable, let the weight of your body begin to drop more thoroughly into the ground with every passing breath. And as the body drops its weight down towards the earth, notice how the breath moves a little lighter as you soften tension in your physical body there's less resistance against the flow of breathing the breath seems to get airier and more open see if you can keep the muscles soft the body deepening towards gravity even as the breath deepens and broadens down into your body. Keep the lengthening of the breath balanced with the releasing of the body so that the deep breathing doesn't create any additional tension that causes your muscles to clench or tighten around the effort. Letting the pace of your breathing slow down. Letting whatever has happened before this practice fade away, becoming more and more distant with every passing breath. Let thoughts of the future fade. And the future will come when it's time, but right now it's the present. So take three deep breaths into the present moment. With every breath, noticing something that keeps you anchored here in the present. Maybe it's the touch of your skin against the ground. That is not from the past or the future. That is only here in the present. Maybe it's the temperature of the air as you breathe it in. Or the sounds that you may hear distantly around you. All of these things keep us connected to where we are at this moment. Maybe take one more breath. Give yourself time and space to move slowly, gently. And go ahead and let your breath soften and loosen so there's less structure around it and more ease. Come back to no effort in the breath and no effort in the body. Just become aware of how you feel here. You can maybe start to move your fingers and toes if you want. Make any little motions or stretches that can help your body awaken and enliven just a bit more. And then go ahead and bend your knees. You can put your feet on the ground for a second and then draw both knees in towards your heart. Maybe catch a hold of your knees or your shins and just let your knees drift a bit side to side. And as your knees settle back into a still space, we'll go ahead and circle our knees a bit. So let your knees drift to the right, out away from you, making space between the thigh and the belly to the left and real close to your abdomen. To the right, away from your belly, to the left and down towards the abdomen. Maybe one more this way. And the next time you get over your belly, you can pause and reverse your direction. So shift the knees left, out away from you. 
down towards the right and in towards your belly. Two more circles, making a full and easy rotation, rocking around on the back of your hips. And once the knees come around towards your belly once more, you can pause with the thighs stable and still. Let your arms release wide and soft to either side of you and take a nice big breath in. And as you exhale, let the knees drift over towards the left. Imagine the legs are glued together for as long as possible. Lower your legs almost until they touch, maybe an inch or two above the earth. And then inhale, bring your knees back up so the thighs align over your tummy. And exhale, same thing to the right. Lower the knees, keep them glued almost until they touch hovering and then bring them back up to the center as you inhale. Let's do another one on each side. Exhale, knees lower towards the left. They don't quite get to land before you inhale them back to the midline. Exhale to the right, almost to the earth, but not quite as you come back up over your abdomen. And this time exhale, lower your knees to the left and go ahead and let them land, settling the length of your thigh and outer calf against the earth. Maybe roll your gaze to the right a little bit. Take two full expansive breaths. That'll really accentuate the twisting action. Last breath that you are. Head comes back to center and bring the knees back to center and lower the knees over towards the right for the last time on the last side and let them land completely. Roll the gaze left. If the knees need to slide up or slide down a little bit or even separate as you come close to the earth, that's fine at this point as you're resting. Two breaths here. And then go ahead and bring your head back to center and bring your knees back to center. And you can begin to make your way to an upright seat, either rocking to one side and pressing up or rolling up and down your back until you kick your way to a seat. Bring the knees up and settle the hips back on a cushion if you're comfortable doing so, or just stay flat on the ground if you're fine where you are. Let the legs cross and take a moment to bring the hands to the knees. Inhale, lift your heart and spread your collarbones as you send your gaze gently up towards the ceiling. Exhale, bring the chin down, round the shoulders forward, and draw the heart and belly downwards and inwards. Inhale, let the belly stretch as the heart and head rise. Exhale, bring the chin down, shoulders forward, heart and belly back. Let's do the last one, breathing in, opening up, lifting towards the ceiling, and exhale, curling and softening down. And as you inhale, just come back to a comfortable neutral seat with a long spine and lower your uh, right ear towards your right shoulder here. And roll your chin towards the center of your throat and roll the left ear towards the left shoulder here and pause. And roll your chin back to the center of your throat over towards the right shoulder, pause. And guess what comes next? All the way across the chest. Big surprise, over to the left. And this time, as you bring your chin across your heart and hover your right ear over your right shoulder, take a moment to come into stillness. Breathe in deep. And as you exhale, just turn your chin down towards your right shoulder, like you're looking at your upper arm, getting a different stretch here in the neck. Turn your gaze back to the center so your ear is hovering over your shoulder. Lift it back up and set it squarely on top of your neck before lowering the left ear towards the left shoulder, taking a big breath. And as you exhale, let the chin roll down, looking at your shoulder. Even if your eyes are closed, just know that if you opened your eyes, you would see your shoulder real close to your gaze. Let the nose tip front and center, and then raise the head back up to center on the neck. So inhale, sit tall here. And as you exhale, put your left hand on your right knee, and let your right hand come back towards the floor behind you. Inhale, sit tall. And exhale, zip your belly up. That'll make you feel like you grew just a half an inch taller. Keep that belly drawing up the center line of your body and start to pick up your back hand. We're not gonna turn our shoulders, but we're gonna let this back arm float up and alongside your right cheek. So the palm will now face over the crown of your head. You could wave at me if you wanted to. 
So keeping the palm facing over the crown of your head, but keeping your shoulders facing right, lower your left shoulder down towards your left knee and dip yourself sideways. Don't go down to your deepest depth right here, because sometimes if we sink as low as possible, we feel the right sit bone lift up and tip yourself off to the side. So gently root down through your right sit bone. That'll keep you anchored, and that'll really emphasize the elongation along the right edge of your body. So inhale, sit up. Shoulders are still facing towards the right. Lower the back hand down behind you. Good. Breathe in. And exhale, turn to face the front of the room. You're going to take your left leg out at a wide angle to the side. One more time. Inhale, sit tall. And exhale, hinge forward straight down, shoulders square to the earth. Let the head bow. And gather the left toes back so that long leg is flexed. Breathe nice and deep here and allow your hamstring to open up a little bit. It's been tight and crossed for a while here. And then go ahead and walk your hands back. Sit up tall once more and cross your legs back to where you started. So to repeat, inhale, elongate. And exhale, turn and place your right hand on your left knee, left fingertips behind you. Breathe in. And as you exhale, let the belly button climb up that central channel of your body. You should feel a little taller and a little narrower across your waistline. So with that energy rising up, keeping your shoulders exactly where they are, begin to float your left arm up close to your cheek. Let the palm turn to face over the crown of your head. And then lower your right shoulder down towards your right knee. So you're still gazing at the same wall the whole time. Sometimes what I like to do to encourage my left sit bone and left side to stay grounded is give a gentle press down through your right hand into your knee. That'll really help you anchor. And inhale, sit tall, still looking at that left wall. Exhale down with the hand behind you. Breathe in. And exhale, turn back to face the front. Okay, go ahead and take the right leg out this time. Stretch it a little bit wide, wider than your hip. The foot can come in if you'd like. Breathe in. And as you exhale, hinge forward. Let the hands or the fingertips come down to the ground. Slowly draw the right toes back. Good. Take a few breaths. Just buying time for the back of the right leg to let go. Good. And go ahead and let your hands climb back. Keep your right leg where it is. Sweep the left leg wide for just a moment as we bend both knees. Pull the heels back a little closer to your seat. Lean back on your hands and the fingertips can point back behind you or in any way that's comfortable. We're just going to sway the knees side to side. So starting in either direction, just imagine windshield wipers moving in unison. There's no rush. You should start to feel a gentle stretch and opening in the outer thigh up into the hip, this line of the body here. And the next time, let's say your knees come over towards the left, leave the knees there, and let your heart turn a little bit towards your shoulders so your shoulders are diagonal. Breathe in. And as you exhale, turn your shoulders towards me so they're a little bit more square. That should really not only deepen the twist here, but deepen the stretch you feel in your outer right hip and thigh. So inhale, turn your heart back towards your knees. Exhale, bring your knees back up. Inhale and exhale, drop the knees towards the right. Let the heart face the knees for a moment. Inhale and exhale, square your shoulders towards the top of your mat just enough so you feel a reaction in your lower body. Make sure you can still breathe. And then inhale, knees up. Exhale once to the left. Inhale up. Exhale once to the right. Good. Inhale up. And as you come over to the left, go ahead and roll over to hands and knees. Put your hands on the mat in front of you and lift your hips. Stepping your knees back so they're underneath your hips. You can move your blanket or add it under your knees, whatever is comfortable for you today. And as you come into all fours with the creases of the wrist under your shoulders and your kneecaps straight down under your hip sockets, take a moment to inhale here, lift the tailbone, lift the shoulders, roll them back, and gaze straight out in front of you. Exhale, lift the belly up, arch your back, and let the ears dangle between the biceps. Go ahead and do it again. Breathe in, hips and head high together. 
Exhale, belly button rises high all on its own, letting the body cascade around it. We'll do two more. Inhale, hips up, head back. Exhale, tuck the hips under and relax the neck. Here's our last one. Inhale, rising up through the tailbone and crown. And exhale, lift the belly and let the back arch. Now go ahead and soften back into a tabletop spine here. And softly and slightly scoop your tailbone under just a click so you feel your low back stretch out a little bit. Keep that tailbone slightly tucked. It's going to be really subtle. And then look towards your right shoulder and draw your right shoulder down towards your right hip along the side of your waist so you can see your right foot. And then inhale back to center. Keep that tailbone slightly tucked and draw your left shoulder towards your left hip. Look over your left shoulder like side crunches. Inhale back to center. Tailbone stays tucked. That'll make sure you're not sagging in the midsection. Look to the right. Come to the center. And last one, tailbone tucked a little bit. Look to the left. Good. Come back to the midline. Just like we did before, inhale, let your hips and head rise. Shoulders roll down the back. Exhale, round your back, let the belly button lift up and let the hips come back towards the feet. Take the weight off your palms if you want to roll your wrists or wiggle your fingers here as you melt into child's pose. Just loosen up as you need to. And then soften down for maybe two or three breaths here. Letting every breath expand a little deeper, kind of like you're building energy, building awareness. Last breath. And lift your gaze. Head comes up off the ground. Stretch the wrists off your shoulders so the elbows pick up and straighten out. Spread through your fingers gently and then come to the knees. Scoop the toes under so the heels rise tall and proud. Press down through your wrists and lift the knees up a foot and a half. Keep a big bend in the knees as you pull your hips away from your hands. Stretch your spine out long and straight. Then you can deepen your heels a little bit as much as it'll go without rounding your back. So you can pedal your legs here if you want. Bend one knee and stretch the opposite heel down. Back and forth, side to side for just a moment. And then go ahead and come back into center. Pull the hips away from the hands. And exhale, walk your feet up towards the top of your mat. Softness in the knees so you can find looseness in the spine. You can sway your head, shake your head, loosen it up. And then bend the knees and let the hips come down behind you into a squat. Reach your arms back alongside your waistline. Let that pull your shoulders up and back until your spine is horizontal with the mat. Keep the legs in the same shape as you lift your shoulders and head. Then press your heels down to straighten the legs. Open the arms, let them raise up. Exhale, bring the arms down, let them center in front of your heart. Inhale, let the arms rise up. Exhale, soften your knees and hinge from your hip creases, nice flat back, until you cascade over your toe tips. Inhale, bring your hands to your shins, let the spine rise to that halfway position. Exhale, relax back down so your fingertips can support you a little bit. As you send the right leg back, the toes will be under. Lift your hips a bit so they're bumped to the sky, and that'll give you space to slide your left foot back alongside your right. Flatten your palms, soften your knees a bit, and stretch your hips away from your hands. Then go ahead and draw the crown of the head forward like it's being pulled parallel to the earth until you flatten to the top of a push-up. Knees come down. Untuck the toes so they point. And just like we were doing before, scoop your tailbone under so you don't have quite such a bump in your backside. You're a little bit more flat. Bend the elbows and lower the chest in between the arms until you land on the front edge of your body. Scoop the tailbone under a little bit more as you raise the shoulders up and the head comes back. And then exhale, relax all the way back down to your forehead or chin. Come up off your belly, back to your hands. Toes under, knees up. Remember to keep that soft bend as you extend back through your sit bones. And then exhale, walk your hands up. Or, I'm sorry, your feet up and towards your hands and lift up halfway, hands to shins, tabletop spine. And exhale, relax. Let the hips become heavy as they descend towards the mat. Arms reach back alongside the curvature of your waist. Lift your shoulders up so you feel your heart is facing square towards the earth. 
Legs stay here. Hinge your upper body away from the thighs. Press the heels. And let the arms float up towards the ceiling and come back down in front of your chest. All right, so go ahead and do that again. Let the arms climb sky high. Exhale, soft knees hinging from your hip creases out and then down. Good. Lift up halfway. You can keep your hands on the earth. If you get a flat back, that's fine. Exhale, everybody bring your hands down. Step back to your right foot, right foot all on its own, right knee down all on its own. Now, if you want to tuck a blanket under your knee, that's fine. Sometimes just keeping your back toes tucked is enough to support the knee. You can always turn the toes to point it if you're comfortable. So as you're here, keep your right hand on the ground, or if it's hard to get your right palm to the ground, make a fist. That really helps give you a few extra inches if you have short arms. Breathe in and sweep your left arm up wide to the side and then turn it towards the ceiling, letting your shoulders face sideways. And exhale, bring that hand wide back down to rest outside your front foot. If you made a fist, untuck your fingers, curl your back toes under, lift the knee, lift the hips, and step back with the left foot. So you're back in down dog. Lengthen from hands to hips. And then glide your head forward, lower your hips halfway down, drop the knees, uncurl the toes, scoop your pelvis under, and let the elbows bend so you build a little upper body strength on your way down to the earth. Tuck the tailbone slightly, you'll feel your glutes engage your backside. Lift your shoulders, roll them back, and exhale, relax back down. Come up to the knees, off your belly, toes under for support, knees up, hips back, Feel like you've got a friend pulling your pelvis towards the wall behind you. And then just the right foot this time will step forward towards that spot between your thumbs. You can always use your toes to scooch it there if you want. And then bring the back knee down to the ground. Toes tucked or pointed with or without a blanket. Left hand will stay on the ground or you can make a fist turning your fingernails inward towards your foot. Sweep your right arm wide. Turn the shoulder sideways so the arm reaches towards the ceiling. And then exhale, let the arm come all the way down. Meet the mat, unclench your fists, turn your back toes under, lift that back knee up, and this time step your back foot in as many steps as you need to take, all the way to standing. Soften your spine. Palms to shins, or any halfway lift that works for you. Exhale, relax it again, bring some softness into the knees, some heaviness to the hips, reach the arms back, let the shoulders draw back so you've got some strength in your back muscles here. Hinge your shoulders back, press your heels down, open your arms wide, and exhale, palms to the heart. Breathe in, send your arms up again, exhale out, bend the knees, hinge with the flat back, and soften. Good. Halfway rise. If you want to straighten your legs with the hands on the earth, that's fine. Exhale, re-soften. And this time, step back through your right foot all by itself. Bring the right foot down to the ground and set the right knee down as well. Again, blanket or toes or point. From here, go ahead and inhale. Sweep your arms up as you come to kind of standing on your back leg. Hands touch and then let the hands descend in front of your heart. So for today, we're going to place the left hand on the hip and the right hand will cup the outer left knee. That will encourage your shoulders to turn sideways a bit. Good. Breathe in, and as you exhale, zip that belly button up. Feel like the core of your body is drawing up towards the crown of your head. Now you can always stay right here, or maybe you want to try a little bit more. You can lean forward and bring your elbow to the top of your knee. Good. Keep the belly button rising. You can always stay here if you want. If you want to go a little bit farther, you can bring your right elbow to the outside of your knee. Lift the palm towards your face. Sometimes I like to rest my cheek on my fingers like I'm thinking really hard about something. Make sure you breathe in. Exhale, keep that belly button zipped. It's really going to help this twist stay deep. Last breath in. As you exhale, slide your elbow back up to the top of your knee. Turn towards the front and release your hands one by one towards the ground. So what we're going to do here is turn the back toes under and lift the back knee up. I'm going to switch sides real quick to give you a better visual. With the back knee raised, bring both hands to the inside of your left foot. Walk your hands 
off the edge of your mat a bit and spin on your toes to point towards the wide edge of your mat. Coming into a forward fold here, letting the whole weight of your shoulders and your head droop down towards the floor. Take a moment here. Let yourself breathe. Last breath. And then go ahead and lift your shoulders until it's horizontal, parallel with your hips here. Bring your hands up to the edges of your pelvis. Bend your knees a little bit and hinge your torso up till you come to standing. Good. Straighten your legs. Once you get here, turn your heels in a little bit. You've got duck feet. Let the toes point a little diagonally open. Keeping your hands on the hips, take a breath in and press the crown of your head up towards the sky. And as you exhale, bend both knees down towards your toenails and pull them a bit back behind you so they drift towards your pinkies a little bit. Inhale, straighten the legs, come back up. We're going to do that twice more before we fold. Bend and open a little bit wider, just a hair, and then come back up. So last time we flow all the way down. Good, hips sink low, that's lovely. And then come back up. And then this time as we lower, we're going to pause. So bring the knees wide, the hips down, and put your palms flat on your belly, one on top of the other. Good. Inhale, sweep your left arm up, turn the palm over the crown of your head. And as you exhale, shift your shoulders towards the right and bow over the length of your thighs. So we're not rotating. The shoulders still stay lateral. We're side bending. Yes. Inhale, keep the legs the same, but come back up and put your left hand on your belly. The legs stay bent, building some strength and distracting ourselves as you inhale the right arm up. Exhale, lower the left shoulder towards the thigh. We're gonna do one more of each, so breathing, come up. Nice strong legs, right hand on the tummy. Left arm rises. Fold over to the side. Good, so you're always staring at the same wall. Last time, breathe in. Exhale to the belly. Inhale the arm, and exhale to the left. That's it. Inhale, sweep up, both hands to the belly. Inhale, straighten your legs as both arms rise up wide and tall. And exhale, hands to the hips. Good. Go ahead and turn your toes to face towards the long edge of your mat, and hinge forward one more time, coming into that wide folded stance. Kind of feel like you're trying to uh, separate your heels a little wider while still keeping them glued to the mat. Feel like you're trying to stretch the expanse of the mat between your heels. That'll rotate your legs, make a little bit more space in your back. Last breath. We're going to come out of this the same way we got into it. So walk your hands over towards the left a little bit, towards the top of your mat. Spin your left toes towards the front. Walk your hands towards the short edge of your mat. Lift your back heel and spin the back toes to point forward. Good. Once you get here, keep the right hand on the ground or make a fist. We did this before. Sweep the left arm up. Turn your shoulders sideways. Reach back through your heel a little bit. The right heel will press back. Crown of the head will reach forward. Just pause a moment. Zip up that inner core of your body and lower that top hand down to the outer edge of your foot. Unclench your fist and let your back knee drop to the mat. Bend it. Good. Now from here, I always like to reach for blocks, especially if you're lingering on fingertips. This is the time to get them. So find them. Maybe pop your hands up on top. I'm going to move mine back just so you can see what we're going to do. You're going to lift your front toes. Letting yourself balance on your heel. And then you can walk the blocks back and let the hips lower towards your back foot, stretching the leg out. Good. Sometimes this is enough. If you feel like you're not getting enough stretch, then walk your front foot forward to the earth again. Move it forward a few inches. You can use your toes. And then repeat the process. Toes up, heel grounded, blocks back. Two breaths here. 
Reach out through your heel a little bit. Press away through the ball of your big toe a little bit. And then bring the blocks forward. Let the foot come down flat. Put the blocks to the side so the hands can take their place. Lift that back knee. Lift your hips up a bit. Bump them to the sky. And then slide your front foot towards the back so you're in down dog. You're going to keep that you know, four to six inches between the balls of your big toes. Softness in the knees. Press your hips back. Take a breath or two as you are here. We're going to repeat the whole process on the opposite side. So step your right foot forward towards your hands. You can wiggle the toes close if you want. And once you wiggle the toes close, go ahead and lower the back knee and let it land. So once again, you can have a blanket or you can point your toes and lay them flat. But go ahead and bring your hands up to your front thigh so your shoulders come up. All right, I'm going to switch sides so you can see here. So go ahead and, for now, put your left hand on your hip. And let your, I'm sorry, your left arm is going to cross. There it is, to cup your outer knee so your right hand will be on your hip. A little bit of a twisty pose here. But let your shoulders turn sideways with that left hand on the outer knee just to rotate your torso around. Very, very gentle twist. So breathe in. And as you exhale, remember to raise the core of your body. Feel like you're kind of buckling a belt around your waistline, making it super snug today. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you can lean the shoulders forward and bring the elbow to the top of your thigh. Just lean. Or if you'd like, you can raise your left hand and kind of rest your chin on your thumb. Maybe slide that bent elbow to the outer knee so your belly lowers even closer down. Another breath. And slide the elbow back up to the top of your knee. Lift your elbow, turn your shoulders back towards the front and lean forward to put your hands back down on the ground. So turn the back toes under if they weren't already. Lift the back knee up. Again, I'm going to switch legs so you can see. So bring your hands around to the inside of your right foot. Walk your hands over to the left. As you walk your hands to the left, spin your toes to the left. So you're standing sideways, cascading over the left long edge. Make sure there's weight in your heels and the ball of your foot. Softly lift your sit bones up towards the ceiling, just a hint. As you drop your heels down low towards the mat, take two breaths. And then go ahead and halfway rise up. Bring the palms up to the edges of your pelvis. Soften your knees so they're not locked and hinge with a flat back all the way up to standing. Excellent. Once you get here, bring the heels in. Make diagonal angles with the feet. Hands can stay on the hips for now as you take a breath in and elongate up through your spine. And as you exhale, bend the knees wide, sink the hips straight down. Not slide them back, but just straight down towards the earth. Inhale up. And exhale straight down. You really expect your sit bones to bump the mat. Once more, we flow up and down. So go ahead and lower. Remember to pull those knees open just a hair. And then rise up. And once you come back down, we'll linger for a little bit. So let your hips come down low. Put your hands one on top of the other on your belly. So let's start with the left arm. Sweep the left arm up. Inhale. And exhale. Dip your shoulders sideways over your right thigh. Inhale up. And exhale. Hand to the belly. Switch it off. Right arm rises. Palm over your head. Lean your shoulders towards the left like you want to lay on your left thigh. Inhale up. One more time each side. So bring the hand to the belly. Left arm rises. And exhale over towards the right. You may notice yourself getting a little lower since we've done this before. Inhale up. Last time, last side. Right arm rise. Exhale, lean towards the left knee. Inhale up. Hands to the belly. Inhale, sweep both arms up straight in your legs. Reach your arms overhead. Exhale, bring your hands to your hips. 
and turn your feet so they point straight towards the long edge of your mat. Lengthen up, long tall spine like you're a marionette being pulled towards the ceiling and exhale, hinge, tucking your hip creases back, folding forward and dangling once more. Good. Remember to kind of slide those heels apart a little bit like they're stretching the mat. Take two breaths here. Then as you're ready, again, we're going to kind of reverse where we've come from. So walk your hands over towards the right. Start to pivot your right toes forward. Keep walking your hands to the right. Keep pivoting your right toes forward. Eventually lift your left heel and spin onto the ball of your foot with the knee raised. Awesome. So right now your hands are going to be framing your front foot. Good. So either keep your left hand on the ground or make a fist and go ahead and sweep your right arm up. Tip your shoulders to the side. Pause here. Remember to wrap that invisible belt around your belly. Feel like a towel that's being wrung out in the center. Reach back through your heel. Reach forward through your head. Ring yourself out to the midsection. And exhale, bring the hand down. Uncurl the fingers in your fist if you have it, and let the back knee lower all the way to the earth. Again, you can find blocks if you want. If you're feeling a lot of compression in the front of your thigh, a lot of strain, it helps to lift the shoulders a bit and let him breathe a bit more. So turn the toes skyward and walk the blocks back, letting the front leg extend out long. Again, if you're not feeling enough release or you feel like you could get a little bit more, you can always go back forward. Move the front foot out and repeat, toes up, balance on your heel, blocks come back. Good. Press away through the ball of your big toe a little bit just so you can see all five toenails clearly. And keep the shoulders kind of bowing over your thighs so you're not going to be leaning back so much. You want the blocks out a little towards your knee just so you're hinging a bit. Good. And then let the blocks take you all the way back to the top of your mat. Bring the foot down. Put the blocks to the side, one by one. Hands take their place. Lift the back knee and step the back foot towards the top in as many steps as it takes you to get there, folding softly over your legs. Nod your head yes and no if you want. And then sink your hips deeper. Reach your arms back horizontally. Let that sh Pull your shoulders back a bit. And then lift the shoulders and head and press down through the heels. Let the arms climb. And as you exhale, let the hands come all the way down, touching in front of your heart space. Good. Go ahead and relax your hands. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see what we're going to do for balance today. So keep your hands on your hips. You're going to have your toes pointing forward. So let's go ahead and start by bending the right knee, kind of raising up on the ball of your foot, spinning the right knee open to the side, and then letting the heel land against your inner leg. Now, a lot of the times, at least for me, as soon as I spin my knee open, watch what happens to my left hip. It collapses. So fine, all right, give yourself some foundation, but then press down into your left foot so the hip pulls back in and you've got that support here. So breathe in. Exhale, let the belly button climb up the center channel of your body, wrap your waistline in, and then see if you want to slide your right heel up so the arch of your foot kind of cups the curvature of your calf. And if not, leave the toes on the ground. You're totally fine doing that. Just keep that left hip drawing in. You want to be pretty comfortable in your lower body because we do have an option to add on today. So I'm going to keep my toes on the ground just so I can demonstrate for you what you can do if you want. Sweep your left arm up alongside your ear. Slide your right palm down towards your knee. Keep the belly button rising, the waistline wrapping in. And again, you can do this with your toes on the ground or your foot on your calf, just taking this more into a side bend. So from where you are, just go ahead and slide your bottom hand up your thigh, bring your arm to the sky, relax your hand down to your hip, swing your knee towards me, clasp it in your hands, roll your ankle a little bit. Ooh, wiggle the toes. All right, now as you let go of the knee, let the ankles cross one on top of the other so the feet are stacked sideways. Keep your left hand on your hip. 
Breathe your right arm up to the sky. Exhale, zip your belly button, tuck your tailbone. Lean a little bit over towards the left, reversing what we were doing before. And come up, hand to the hip, uncross the ankles, and one more side to go. So bend your left knee, spin the knee open and see if it has a counter effect in your hip. Bring the heel to touch your inner leg and then press the right foot down so you stand up taller and the hip comes back in where it belongs. So you have some support here. Play with this for a moment. Remember, we've got some things to add on. So if this is challenging enough for you, but gives you enough support that you can then explore into the upper body, it might be a good place to stay. Again, you can explore the calf or you can even pull the heel up higher if you want towards your upper thigh. I'm not going there today. I'm going to linger on the calf and see if I can do it on this side. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Even yoga teachers have their challenges. So raise your right arm up towards the ceiling and slide the left hand down towards your kneecap, shifting your shoulders sideways a bit. Keep that right hip hugging in. You want that support. Mm -hmm. And go ahead and let the top arm climb back up. Bring the shoulders over the hips. Hand back to the hip. Yes, knee towards me, lift it and clasp it, and roll that ankle around. Free up the toes. And as you slowly let the knee go, cross the left ankle over top of the right ankle and stack the feet side to side. Right hand to the hip, left arm to the sky. Exhale, zip your belly button, scoop your tailbone under. What that's going to do for you is take the arch out of your low back. Well, I shouldn't say out. Take the ex excess arch out of your low back to neutralize your hips and keep the lumbar arch in a natural curvature. So keep that lift and lean towards the right. Smiling helps. Come back up to the sky, hand to the hip, uncross your legs, stand tall at the top of your mat and breathe your arms widen up. Exhale the arms open, soften your knees, lengthen the spine outwards, angle it downwards. Hands to the shins, rise up halfway. And as you exhale, bring your hands to the earth. We're going to step back into our final down dog, so maybe let the right foot blaze the trail first. Hips up, left foot back. Reach those hips back. Take a breath or two. And then allow the knees to come down when you're ready. Point your toes. Let the hips move back. Relax the head down to the earth. If you can't get your head down to the earth if it really strains the back of your neck, then stack your palms underneath your head, letting the elbows wing side to side. And you can rest the head on the back of the hands. Say two more breaths here. Maybe take this time to cultivate a steady, predictable rhythm of breathing. And then go ahead and let your head lift. If you have your palms stacked, separate them. Lift your hips from your feet. We're going to walk down flat onto your belly. So hands come forward, knees go back. Bring your elbows underneath your shoulders here. Go ahead and take a breath in when you get here. Your palms will be flat, fingers facing forward. And as you exhale, do a gentle scoop of your tailbone under. You should feel your low back lengthen and your backside muscles get a little bit stronger. Take another breath here. And as you exhale, draw your low ribs a little bit in towards your spine. So they're not sagging down so much, but they're kind of pulling up, keeping a more even curvature. Then allow your head to lift. Maybe your shoulders pull down your back a little bit. Here in Sphinx, very strong, very supportive. Take another moment. Tailbone presses down, low ribs draw back a bit, shoulders raise and descend down the back. It's kind of challenging to keep all those happening at once, I know. 
And as you're ready, soften it all so you come kind of down towards the earth, letting yourself melt a bit. So pull your left hand back towards your left rib cage. Spin on your right elbow so the right fingertips point towards the left. And then roll yourself onto your side here. And if you're on a hard floor, this might be a nice place to put a blanket under your hips. You're going to want to keep your right shoulder and your right elbow aligned with one another. So make sure it's straight up and down here. Sometimes it helps to press down into your elbow a lot of times when we just kind of hang out. We're really sinking into this joint. So press your right elbow down to the ground and kind of lift the weight of your shoulder off your upper arm bone. All right, so you're going to keep your legs long and straight out behind you from the crown of your head, letting your body align in one lean line. Bend your top knee and then raise your top knee and bring the left foot down to flatten in front of the right shin, turning your toes of that left foot to point back towards your right toes. Yes. In fact, flex your right toes, draw them back a little bit so that lower leg is more active. Good. So just here, pause. There's a lot going on. You want your right elbow pressing down, you want your tailbone scooping a little bit under, kind of like you're trying to press your belly against the wall in front of you. And even as you press your belly against the wall in front of you, you want to draw that top knee back a little bit. So they're moving in opposite directions. All right. So take a breath. Enjoy what you've built. And then when you're ready, go ahead and lift your left palm and cup your outer raised knee and gather that raised knee inwards towards your shoulder like you're doing a little crunch. So lift your foot off the ground, give it a hug. What I like to do here a lot of times once I get up here is put my hand around the back of my thigh. <laughs> Sometimes that makes it more comfortable and it allows you the opportunity to go a bit further if you want by straightening your top leg out long. Keep that right elbow pressing down. You can always slide your hand up to cup your calf or your ankle or if you're close, you can get your toes. Make sure your hips aren't sinking back. Make sure your hips are still pressing forward. It's a lot going on. Breathe in. And as you exhale, bend the top knee, hug it towards your shoulder, going back the way we came in, and put your left foot down on the ground. Now lower your left knee down towards the earth. So it kind of sinks from this upright down, like you're closing the cover of a book. Find a block. It should be nearby. Tuck it under your left shin. So that lower leg is kind of parallel to the earth, a little elevated. Good. And then curl your right arm up underneath your cheek and just lay on your side. Make sure your shin is relatively parallel, that left shin, so the heel isn't coming back towards your bottom leg, but the heel is in line with your bent knee a bit. All right. The bottom leg will stay long. From here, go ahead and drift your left shoulder back. Roll off your bottom arm. Let the arms kind of open gently side to side. You can always move your block under your knee up a bit higher if the knee shifts its angle. You can even turn your block on its side so your leg is up a little bit more horizontal to the ground. Your thigh will be a little bit more parallel. Go ahead and lift that left shoulder. You can maybe bring your hand to your waist or your hip. Roll onto your side and tuck your right arm under your cheek again so your back will be started. Mm -hmm. Stretch out your top leg long. You can remove the block. Set it aside. Then bend both knees tightly up towards your belly and roll over fully onto your back. And once you get to your back, grab that block again and slide the block under the back of your hips. So you're almost like sitting up on a little step. Mm -hmm. Lower the back of your hips down and make sure that the curvature of your arch is still free and open to the air. It's only the back of your pelvis that's rooted, not the arch of your low back at all. If you're feeling a little tight here in your low back, one thing you can do is rest your arms alongside you. Lift your hips off the block just a sliver. We're not going for height. We're just lifting the support. Scoop your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Keep the tailbone scooping up towards the ceiling and lower the hips down onto the block again from there. 
That'll neutralize the tip of your pelvis once more. So from here, go ahead and draw your right knee in. Lift that foot up. Let your hands clasp around your shin or the back of your thigh. And you can let the right heel dangle towards your sit bones. Yep, just keep that knee nice and comfortable. And as you keep a gentle connection between your hands and the right knee, focus on the feeling of the left foot flat on the earth. And just start to slide that left foot out a little bit farther away from your body. And see if that leg can lengthen until even the toes pick up from the earth and you're resting on the back lines of your heel. This should create a real nice stretch down the front of your left thigh, your hip crease area. Another breath. Go ahead and bend that long leg and slide the heel back towards your block so the left foot is flat. Release your right leg. Put the right foot flat. Go ahead and lift your hips off the block. Slide it to the side. Put it away. And roll over onto your left shoulder. And lift up so you're resting on your left elbow. And stretch your legs out back long, straight out from the crown of your head, just like we did before. You can always put a blanket under your hips if you're feeling too much compression there. So make sure that left elbow is straight up and down under your shoulder and press the elbow down to the earth. Take the weight up off the top of your arm bone. Good. Bend your right knee. Lift the right knee towards the ceiling. And place that foot flat in front of your shin bone. Spin the toes to point down the length of your mat towards your bottom foot. And then flex the left foot there so the low leg is more active. Okay. Just breathe. Scoop your tailbone under a little bit and draw the top knee back to counteract that. Yes. Good. And from here, you can reach down and maybe tap your knee with your free hand. And then gather that raised right knee in towards your right shoulder. Feeling a little warmth building along the curve of your right waist. Maybe bring your hand around to the back of the thigh. Mm -hmm, if you haven't already. And straighten that leg up and out away from your hip. You can always move that hand up to cup your calf or your ankle. Or you can always keep the knee bent in towards your shoulder. Make sure you didn't lose, because I know I did, that press of your left elbow down, lifting the left shoulder off your upper arm bone. So wherever you are, keep your tailbone scooping under, breathe in here, and then bring the knee in towards your shoulder, cup the top of your shin or the back of your thigh, and then release that right foot all the way down flat to the mat in front of your bottom leg. Now keeping this knee bent, you're just going to swing it down towards the ground. Let it kind of collapse. Where's your block? We had it just a moment ago, didn't we? Find the closest one. Put the block under your inner calf, below your shin. So the knee and the heel are now horizontal. And lower your shoulder down. Tuck your left arm underneath your cheek. Good. And with your left arm tucked up underneath your cheek, that should give your neck some space. You can slowly start to lower your right shoulder down behind you. Turn your heart up towards the sky. Extend both arms, uncurling even that one that was underneath your head. If your knee lifted up off the block a bit, I know mine did, turn the block sideways. So you're a little bit higher, but the shin is still horizontal. You can roll your gaze over towards your right fingers if you want. And then bring the gaze back towards the ceiling. And lift that back shoulder. Roll all the way onto your left shoulder. You can gather the left arm underneath the side of your face if you want. And straighten that bent leg long so the legs are stacked once more. If you have that block in front of you, you can always set it to the side. Just so you have enough room to bend your knees up towards your belly button. Curl up a little bit. 
And then flip into your back again. Knees to the sky, hips to the mat, shoulders and head flat. Find your block, you know where it is, and put it one more time under the back of your hips. Good. So from here, notice how your low back feels. Make sure your low back feels air. Like you could really hold hands under the arch of your low back if you wanted to. All right, so if you need a little bit more space, if your low back is feeling kind of tight, Lift your hips again, maybe just that half an inch. Scoop your tailbone up like you're tucking it towards the ceiling. Keep that tuck as you lower the back of your hips down to the block once more. From there, lift your left foot and hold on to your knee. Or wrap your hands around the back of your calf. You can use both hands, keeping that heel heavy. So it's really easy here. If you're feeling uncomfortable on the block, please take a moment, put your foot down, move the block around, really make sure it supports you. And then keeping that left knee nice and easy, arms relaxed and shoulders soft, you can slide the right foot out. Sometimes I like to even use my toes to creep the foot forward down the length of the mat until it lengthens. Let the toes tip up as you rest on the back of your heel. The more you linger here, the more you should feel that stretch down the front of your right hip crease. Last breath. And go ahead and slide that right foot back towards your seat. Plant the foot flat and release the top leg down so both feet are flat alongside one another. Go ahead and pick your hips up off the block. Set the block aside as you bring your hips back down to the ground. Hug both knees in towards your tummy and sway it out. Good. So coming back into center here, you can go ahead and put your feet down. Stretch your legs out long and straight in front of you. Separate your heels wide towards the edges of your mat or towards the corners. And then pick up your left foot and cross your left ankle on top of your right. Now, this may not feel super comfortable, and if it doesn't, a great option is to place your left foot just to the inside of your right foot. So it's not on top. Instead of bunk beds, they're just real close neighbors. So find a space that's comfortable for you. You can always move your feet, whether they're stacked or side by side. You can move them to the right a little bit to accentuate the length in the left side body. But if you're already kind of uncomfortable, you can always move your feet a little bit back towards the midline to make sure you're staying safe here. So wherever you are, wherever your legs ended up, sweep your left arm up alongside your cheek. You can let the arm drape and dangle above your head if you want. Just keep it soft. And then slide your right hand down the earth and let your shoulders pull towards the right, like you're kind of trying to tuck your hand over your, under your heels. Take a few breaths here. Go ahead and let your shoulders rise and shift back to the middle of your mat as you release your top arm down. Uncross your ankles, sending the left foot over to the left side so it's wide in its own corner now. And we're going to switch off to the other direction. So with the left leg wide towards the left corner, cross the right ankle on top. Or you can place it right to the inside if that's better. Sweep your right arm up alongside your cheek. Let the elbow soften and the arm be, be melted. Make sure your heels are crossed over towards the left corner of the mat so we switch sides now. Otherwise, it's going to feel really weird. So from here, slide your left hand down and shift your shoulders over towards the left, making a more pronounced crescent shape with your body. Good. You can relax that top arm softly. If it slides down a little bit, that's okay. Breathe a bit. Good. 
make your shoulders move back to center as your top arm slides down alongside your hip. Uncross your ankles, put them back in their own corners, and then bend both knees, put your feet on the ground, and hug the legs in again. You give yourself a wibble wobble. And then we're going to create a little bit of length in your low back before we come to laying down. So as you inhale, straighten your legs up towards the ceiling and straighten your arms backwards alongside your ears. And as you exhale, bend the knees, wrap the knees with your hands. Lift your head and tuck your chin towards your throat, forehead towards your knees. All right, lower your shoulders down, breathe in, legs go up, arms go back. Exhale, wrap your hands around your knees as the heels lower, lift your head, forehead to the knees. We'll do one more time. Lower your shoulders and head. Breathe the arms and legs open. Exhale, curl up in a tight little ball. Lift your head, tuck, and then relax your head down and release your knees so your feet ground on the mat. You can stretch your legs out long from here if you want. Or if you'd like, you can keep them bent. Maybe it felt nice for you a few moments ago and we had our heels wide towards the corners of the mat. You're more than welcome to do that arms nice and wide or the palms can rest on your belly or your heart or wherever they're comfortable here. So make your little shuffles with your eyes closed and follow the sensations of your body down a little bit deeper to greater support and greater comfort. Find a place where you don't want to move anymore. Eventually, you'll find that one spot that feels just right. It feels so good that any desire to move completely vanishes. And all that you want to do is just lay here and breathe. So go ahead and let yourself do that. Sink into your comfort. Sink into your softness. You can take a few deep breaths if you'd like to kind of settle your mind, settle your nerves. Maybe two, maybe three. But eventually, even letting the effort it takes to breathe deeply fade. So if the breath is unstructured and free once more. Letting go of any guidance any strength, any intention. Just allowing yourself to melt into the floor. Letting every bit of stress fade and vanish into the background. Aware of your breath as it moves within your body. Spend a moment to invite every breath a little bit deeper. And as the breath lengthens, maybe become more and more aware of where you are. 
more and more embodied as you move fingers and toes. Rolling wrists and ankles if you'd like. If you'd like to take a stretch, you can always reach your arms back and point and flex your feet. Release in any way that's comfortable for you. Let the arms come back down inside you. Bend the knees. And as the feet come back to the ground, go ahead and choose a side and roll yourself over in that direction. Lift your head, lift your shoulders, and walk yourself back up into a comfortable cross-leg seat, providing a little support with the blanket if that works for you. And as you allow the legs to cross, bring the hands together in front of the heart. Let the eyes close one more time. And notice where in your body feels warm. Where feels awakened and stimulated and utilized? What little corners of your body do you feel now that you didn't really notice before? Or have you paid attention that maybe you haven't recently? We'll close with our chant for peace. And you can always join in or listen, depending on your comfort level today. So take a deep breath in. Loka, Samasta, Sukino, Bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. And may thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and that freedom for all. Raising your thumbs to your forehead. Honoring the light within one and all as we bow forward to the mantra, Namaste. Namaste. Thank you all again for joining in our practice today. I hope you had a good time. I hope you got to know your body a little bit better, and I hope you feel pretty good afterwards after paying attention to some of those dark corners really working on the sides of our body today that we don't often um cultivate a lot of awareness of um so this will be airing on friday on youtube uh just to let you all know on sunday we're going to be shifting to live zoom streaming so if you've never done zoom before i would highly recommend visiting their website watching some of the tutorials about how to join a Zoom meeting. If there are any questions, shoot me an email, michelle at harmonyyogava.com. Feel free to give me a call. Um, I'd be happy to walk you through anything. All you really need is a tablet, a phone, or a computer. Um, a camera on the tablet, phone, or computer helps. Um, but you can always just use the audio, and that'll allow you to ask questions of the teachers without us needing to see you although you should be able to see us. So again, check out Zoom, um, enjoy the YouTube videos that we're gonna leave up for a while, and I hope to see you and hear from you in our live practice in a few days. Thanks for coming.